In this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question, permutations. A permutation is a very simple concept to understand. Let's say that leak code gives us two numbers. What are all of the possible arrangements that we could have with one and two? And key point here, the order does not matter. Well, we could have the probably the most simple one and two. We could also have two and one. And those are all of the possible permutations. Notice something important. The order does not matter. And that is the distinction between a permutation and a combination. But we will talk about combinations in a later video. Let's just focus on permutations for now. So this is great, but what algorithm are we going to use and how are we even going to create it? Well, first things first, we're going to be using what's called a backtracking algorithm. And you can always identify a backtracking algorithm because in the leak code description, the constraints are super low. The nums.length is going to be under six, which is as low as it gets. And that's how you can always identify a backtracking algorithm. But how exactly are we going to design this? So here's the crazy thing about backtracking algorithms. They're all pretty much the same. They all follow the same steps. And what we're gonna do is we're going to walk through step by step the algorithm that we are about to write. Let's say that LeetCode gives us three possible numbers, one, two, and three, and we need to form permutations for all of those numbers. The first part of this code is going to be just a simple base case. All recursive functions require a base case and a backtracking algorithm is no different. And what this base case is going to do is it's going to prevent us from recursing past three because we only want three possible permutations. Next part, for loop. Why do we have a for loop in a backtracking algorithm? You're probably used to working with binary trees, which only have two children. But backtracking algorithms typically have more than two children. In our example, we have three children. And the reason that we have three children is because we have three possible numbers to form permutations of. If we had a four right here, we would also have a four as a child. The for loop serves one very important purpose. Its purpose is to iterate through every single possible number that we are given by leak code. In this example, we are given one, two, three, and this for loop is going to iterate through every single possible number trying to form permutations as we recurse through the tree. So we now know that as we recurse through the tree, we're also going to be checking for possible permutations via a for loop. We're going to be running a for loop through our numbers trying to check for permutations. We don't want to try to form permutations for duplicate numbers. And that's why we're going to have this piece of code right here that's going to check if it's already contained within the data structure that we're trying to store it in. Once we've determined that the number is not a duplicate and is indeed a valid permutation, all that we're gonna do next is add it to the data structure of our choice. And we're going to add it to a data structure because we need to keep track of all of these permutations. Once we've identified the valid permutation and added it to our data structure, you guessed it, we're gonna move on to the next element. We're going to recurse. And recursion is pretty much in backtracking algorithms, a fancy word for continue to go down the tree. As we go down the tree, either we're going to continue adding to our data structure and finding permutations, or we're going to get to the bottom of the tree and trigger our base case. Once that happens, the stack is going to unwind and this next piece of code is going to execute. And this is where we're going to start removing elements off the tree as we go back 
up the stack. And that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead, let's hop into IntelliJ and let's code this algorithm. So first things first, let's create a brand new Java class and I'm going to call this solution. Within the solution file, we're going to first house our method and this method is going to return a list of lists and this list of lists is going to contain integers. I'm gonna go ahead, do my import really quick and we're going to call this function permute. It's going to take in an integer array of nums. We're going to need a data structure to hold everything inside of. So what I'm going to do is just new up a list of lists and this is what we're going to return in our function to give to leak code. Next, we're going to need a helper function. We can't do all of the recursion in this function because there's only one parameter. And in order to obtain the result that we want, we're going to have to have multiple parameters. So we're going to go ahead, pass in our nums. We're going to pass in our result because we're going to need this as we recurse. And we're also going to new up what's called a linked hash set. A linked hash set is a great data structure because it's going to give us O1 search and it's also going to maintain the order for us. So we're also going to need to return the result from this function and we're gonna go down here and we're going to create our helper function. This helper method that we're making, this private method is where all of the recursion is going to be done. And remember, every recursive function needs a base case. And what this is going to do is once we get to the bottom of the tree, this is going to be what signals for us to go back up. And the reason we're going to go back up the tree is because we have three possible numbers in our permutation we don't want to calculate anymore. But every recursive function, each time that a function recurses, it doesn't necessarily mean that the base case is going to trigger. So if the base case does not trigger, this for loop is going to execute. And when this for loop executes, we're going to try to add a possible number to our permutation, but we don't want duplicates. So that's what this if statement is going to do. It's going to check for duplicates. If we don't have that number, we're going to add it. And when we add it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add it to our set. Once we add it, we're going to continue down the tree. Our job is done, so we need to continue down. We're going to recurse. We're going to check for more permutations down the tree. And once the base case triggers and the stack begins to unwind and we begin to go back up the tree, we need to prune. We need to remove elements so that we can check for more possible permutations. And that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab all this right here. I am going to copy, get out of full screen, and let's go ahead and toss this into leak code. So I'm going to go ahead, bring this over. I'm going to actually get rid of the whole entire method and just copy and paste the whole entire thing. Let's go ahead, run it, see what we get. Thank you, God, it passed. Our test case, test case is passed. Let's go ahead, hit that submit button. Let's analyze our time. Time complexity is gonna be bad because all backtracking algorithms have terrible time complexities. But we're at factorial, so we're not doing too bad. And let's go ahead, check our memory as well too. Our memory is N. Congratulations, we have passed the interview. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. As always, thank you for watching.